Welcome to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Would you sleep with sick women? I may be pregnant, but I'm still a man. Spank the unruly ones. It's indecent, it's vulgar, it's blasphemous. You're gonna ride you till you can't stand up. Come on, come on, let's go down. All right, all right, keep your shirt on. Love Line's meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Here's Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. It's that coveted 18 to 34 thing that uh, everyone's looking for now, and uh, that's uh, that's where it seems to be doing the best. Mm-hmm. And this is, uh, so it came out end of August. Yeah. Uh, so where are we? Yeah. In like our third episode coming up? Yeah, Monday will be the third episode. Monday night at 9. And uh, who else do you work with on this? It's with Jaleel White and Dave Ruby. Mm. Urkel, of course. Drew, you knew that, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Jaleel is, uh, why does everyone grow up, I know this sounds cliche, but so fast on, <laughs> on TV? I know. I mean, like, I look the same as I did when Jaleel hit the air is this uh, <laughs> 11-year-old, you know, sort of uh, Goofy guy. Adam's, a, yeah. oversized Adam's apple neighbor guy. And now, how big is he? Well, he's he's like six feet tall now. He, But that's the major growing stage, you know. <laughs> he grew up on that show, and he couldn't even play Urkel anymore. It was funny, because he was having... To like, you know how everything gets sad at the end? Like whenever you make a character choice, whether it's Pee Wee Herman or Urkel um, or Lenny and Squiggy or uh, Ellie <laughs> Mae from, you know, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies or something, it always gets a little sad toward the end. Yeah. It's real funny at the beginning. And then at the end, it's like his voice has changed. Uh, he's six foot one. He's 205, I, I, you know, and he's like. <laughs> I guess it's still worse because he became like, so you know, the star of that show. Show, you know, I know, but it, it was it was so sort of strenuous at the end. Yeah, and they canceled it, or it ended, and now he has a new show. Yeah, I think after I'm trying to it think, I think they cancel they cancel shows like in the first like three to four seasons, but once you make it like nine seasons, they end. Yeah. They end right. right. Exactly. They, they no longer can be canceled. Right. It's it's like hey, f you. We've been on uh, eleven years. We right. were canceled. Yeah. We're ending the show. Well, I think you sign like a seven year contract. And, that thing, and then they'll, they'll, you know, either another network will pick it up or something like that. They'll extend that, that show was just on 15 networks at 15 time slots, uh, eight days a week. Oh. It was uh, <laughs> it was an Urkel orgy every time I turned the uh, TV oh, on. Oh, okay. All right, but enough about Urkel. So grown ups and, and he, um, uh, he's a fine actor. Let's he's broken away from the Urkel. He well, stereotype. that's a character he plays. That's right. He's actually really hilarious. That's there. right. And and uh, Marissa's brother. <laughs> Is uh, what the hell's his name? Where the hell is that? He he was on. Uh, he he's he done. A, <laughs> where the hell is that? But tell, Giovanni. Giovanni. Yeah. yeah. Now Giovanni has done a whole bunch of movies, but right. uh, not only that. A lot of you may remember him as the husband of the goofy chick on Friends. Who no no not the husband pregnant. the brother. Yeah, but he was she was the husband. He was married. He was married to an older woman. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the husband. He, he. Well, he was a husband and a brother. But he was a husband. Well, he was mainly a brother. Of whom? Phoebe. Phoebe's. Lisa brother. Kudra. Uh -huh. Right. But he. Uh, I know who he is. I just. Okay. I, you know. <laughs> I, I. I may not have worded it just right, but the the point it's is. It's a busy is, schedule, right? He, he you was, don't. You don't get out much. Do my you? hand hurts. Okay. He was trying <laughs> to have a baby, and he couldn't have a baby with his older goofy uh, wife, uh, so uh, Phoebe decided to uh, get pregnant for him, and uh, mm -hmm. he's really uh, he's really a wonderful actor, this guy, because he does mm -hmm. these far-out, wild comedic roles, and then he does these real serious roles, yeah. too. He just likes to do different things, I guess. Yeah, well, get yeah. him on the show. Yeah. I know he's shy, but you tell him to get over it. And listen, <laughs> he is shy. this whole like actor business, like, hey, I'm really shy. Uh, look, stay home if you're shy. I mean, what? don't act. He does. <laughs> yeah, but he's acting for a living. Come on. He can't be that shy. It's different in front of a camera, I guess. A camera, a live audience. I mean, you're on Friends, for Christ's sake, on a reoccurring role. And he was on for like a whole season, right? Yeah. 
Think of the torture. Yeah, no, a couple seasons. I mean, you know, on it recording. On and off, yeah, 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 but for quite some time. I mean, it's in every episode for we, a while. We had to do press in Japan, and we had to do lots of interviews, and he was shy. You know, he'd talk about the characters and stuff, but it, it's kind of painful, you know? I understand. I know. I know. Yeah. Adam's that way, drop Adam it. is that way, too. It I'm took tortured. a long time to drag him out. It I'm does. tortured myself. Yeah. Erica. No, I'm just not talented enough to be tortured. Erica, right. you're 20. Yeah. What's going on? Um, well, I'm having problems, like, coming to a point of orgasm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been with the same guy for a year and a half, and um, nothing's changed with him. Everything's completely normal. But for, like, the past two weeks, it's taken me, like, three times as long to have an orgasm. Um, but you're having one. Yeah. How long is three times as long? I'm talking, like, from two minutes to, like, 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, humanity. Wow. Are you tired? <laughs> um, well, I did just start back to college for the first time in a couple years. Are you on a medication? Um, no, I don't take any medicine. No birth control pills, anything like no. that? No. Nothing. I two uh, two minutes, though, in the past. What's that? Two, two minutes? minutes. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. And, you know. All right. So but in the beginning, it was okay, right? <laughs> really good for, oh, like, okay. you know, for ever since, like, whenever I began. Yeah, but is it a good thing to have an orgasm in two minutes? Well. Don't you want to savor you it? You can have another one. <laughs> can you have another one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know exactly time it, but that's just like a ratio, you know? Okay, listen. Ratio wait, what to what? Hold on a second. I, I'm sorry to have to start yelling at our listeners already, but listen, Screwball. Is it a good... They never answer my question. It drives me insane. Well, it drives I, me insane. Is it good to have an orgasm in two minutes? Did you like that? Yeah, that's that's what I love, and that's what I'm like looking to come to again. Okay. And is it because you could then have another orgasm two minutes later? Mm, I mean, usually I wouldn't, but it's just. But well, why is it so good? It's all right. It's just what she likes. Hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, okay, hey, okay. hey. No, I'm pissed off. No, I kind of know what she means. Why is it good to have an orgasm in two minutes? Why is it bad? And not have another orgasm. But it's and then but also during you're not as turned on, right? I mean, during the ten minutes. During the longer ones lately. Yeah, like, well, um, well, I thought maybe it was it had something to do with like maybe I'm just not in the mood to have sex. Maybe I'm too tired. Is or it the same right. guy? Then, yes. Like, um, Last night, I decided to masturbate, and it took, like, so long. Like, it was so frustrating. I, like, quit twice in between, and I was uh. like, oh, my God, I have to just fucking get this over with. You know, like, you have to. You know, you can't start something and not, you know, finish it, so. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, listen, there are possibilities. One is that there's some medical problem, thyroid condition, God knows what going on, yeah. some and, and some change in your ovulatory cycle. Two is that this is just plain old stress and you're tired. Three is something's wrong in the relationship. Four is maybe you're a little depressed. Lots of possibilities. Five, but, who cares? By and large, going to pass. I think, I think it's just going to go away. And well, four play but, is yeah. good. Get, you know, before you do it. Would you say so? Yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't... Okay. Yeah. She only has one. It comes in two minutes. Now she has one. It comes in 15 minutes, and that's upsetting. <laughs> and... I don't believe we got. I don't think it's about the her. time, though. Actually, it's right. more Something about the being on. turned on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's not. She's not. Her juices aren't flowing. Right. And that's fine. Yeah. Now, we didn't ask how long it's been going. It's probably been happening for three days. So. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Keep moving forward. Yeah. Dandre. Yeah. Hey, what's up, you guys? DeAndre. DeAndre. Yeah, that's it. Is that the name? Yeah. All right. You're 17. Hey, what's up with the Vital Maps and Cock Rings, man? Oh, no. The what? Okay. Adam? I'm opening a store at a mall, a, a specialty store. I guess <laughs> they call them boutique-type stores. It's going to be called, uh, what's it going to be called, Drew? Simply. Simply Lava Lamps and Cock Rings. <laughs> <laughs> is that what do we agree on simply or nothing or simply yeah. yeah simply simply lava lamps and cock rings uh, and i'm looking for distributors right now i'm looking uh for people who want to uh franchise these things you well, know uh, let me know when you guys are uh you know accepting applications for employment <laughs> yeah yeah uh, well yeah. We, we we i'm not gonna hire guys oh. that's a little creepy yeah yeah, that, I mean, I'll have him in the back stocking <laughs> the lava lamps and the cock rings, but at the counter, it's just going to be beautiful young women. I'm dressed in the hot dog on the stick uh, outfits. Yeah, those <laughs> outfits, yeah. 
That's good. I can just jack free cock rings now. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. There we go. Yeah, he's working jack and uh, cock ring right into right. the same sentence. <laughs> no, uh, here's my problem. Um, I live in Nakanyata, and there's like a lot of wealthy people where I live. Mm-hmm. And there's this girl that I babysit down the street, and she's 14 years old. And lately, like in the past three weeks, she's been like trying to like do like sexual stuff with me. Like um, the, on the last time, she I was uh, watching a movie and I started to fall asleep. And I woke up and I caught her like trying to like unzip my pants and stuff. And there's been several occasions where like she tried to take off her clothes or like she tried to like get on top of me and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like I'm scared to tell her parents because like I'm afraid her like parents are gonna fire me or something because mm. they're paying me like ten bucks an hour and I work like five hours. I mean, um, what is up with this babysitting? It's like a dollar an hour. But have you tried to tell her to stop? But that was also all the couch chocolate like, you could. That's do. right, seventy dollars an hour worth of food, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, be that as it may. Uh, yeah, did you talk to her? Well, like, not only did I talk to her, but sometimes I have to, like, wrestle her off me and stuff. And yeah. I'm, like, scared to tell her parents because, like... Well, wait, wait you, you're <laughs> wrestling her off of you? Because she, like, she thinks it's a joke or something. Okay, here's here's what you do. Now, here's what I would do. I would probably just drop the gig. Yeah. You know, here's how it works. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah, I would they, not go there. It's not worth the 40 two bucks you make that night or whatever it is. Yeah, here, here's the way it works. They call you on a Tuesday. They say, hey, this Saturday we got some tickets to the opera. Can you babysit? And you say, bad luck. I'm going out of town uh, camping with my cousin. And you just you, you keep avoiding. But wait, are you attracted to the, Are you attracted to her? Where is it? I hung up. I put him on hold because mm. his line was so bad. Are you attracted to her? No. Uh-uh. No, he'd do something. And you're 17? Oh, boy, Adam. You mm-hmm. think so? I'm sorry? Our listeners? Yeah. Yeah, if she was, like, some really hot 14-year-old with a body and everything, mm-hmm. hell, yes, he would have done something to her. Oh my she God. has the body. She's, like, fully developed and everything, but... Yeah, but you don't like her. Just stay away, though, okay. please. Yeah. yeah, I've been, like, babysitting her for, like, you know, a while now. More oh, than that, babysitting. That's a little while. <laughs> that's awful. Yeah, and listen... Yeah, uh, folks, parents, don't leave. Them. Don't get a seventeen-year-old no. guy yeah, to uh, yeah. come and, in and watch the kitties. And fourteen, can't you be alone at fourteen? I kind of think you can. Why not a girl? I don't yeah, get it. A male. Oh, I'm just. I'm. I'm gonna hire. Maybe uh, the parents want it going. Adam, <laughs> let's get some eunuchs. I. That's right. who I'm gonna hire. Yeah. I know. You know, I'm gonna hire. Um, uh, what was uh, Opie's grandma's name from uh, Aunt B? Aunt B. Aunt B. That's what I'm. Yeah. I'm talking no, about like a I, bonnet I, I and a purse. Him. No, no don't then trust the him. kids are miserable. Get you don't even trust Aunt B. No, you don't trust Aunt. B. No, I still put a video camera. <laughs> 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 what you Some. What do you? What are you going to hire? Some eunuch? Yeah. Yeah, but so they're right, right from the emperor's inner sanctum. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. We got to start breeding eunuchs now, or yeah. how's that work? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, okay. So anyway, get out of the deal. But here's what I would do as well. If, if you wanted to keep the gig, De- DeAndre, I would say the next time she jumps on me, if you do any of this, any shenanigans again, and you know what I'm talking about, I swear to Christ, I will tell your parents as soon as they walk in the door. I will tell them everything. So if you do it again, I'll tell them. That's it. You know what? That's it's what you it's see, in you your power. What, you know what? Though it's so such a crazy situation. And if she does it again, yeah. just don't come back. It's so yeah, don't come back. Yeah, it's too crazy. But Get you can job. you can settle kids down that way. By the way, by threatening not uh, crazy ones. Uh, really, really crazy ones. Once they're up, on the up, cusp, up, up the end, yeah. you get a new job. You can find another job that probably pays more. Man. No, you can't. He's seventeen. There's a nice McDonald's in Lafayette. Yeah, there is a nice. He's saying ten bucks an hour under the table. Hmm. Allie. Yes. You're uh, eighteen. That's me. What's going on? Hi, Allie. Um, well, okay, I'm dating a 42-year-old. Uh-oh. Why? Why? Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, just so you don't know, I met him on the Internet, but just so you don't think this is a freak thing, uh, I, I've always attracted older guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You've listen. All seventeen and eighteen year olds attract older, older guys. guys. Yeah. The question yeah. is, why are you attracted to them? Why do you go for that? I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. How old were you and your dad? Like? I under. I mean, I can understand it though. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Explain. Well, it's the the 
sort of the power and the... Yeah, but why do you need that? You know what I mean? That means the voice is all about that symbolism, that, but the it's, fantasy. It's the, it's the knowledge, you know, you, as opposed to being with a guy her age, 18 years old. Yeah, but but, but the guy's 24, been around the 26. Block. I know, you know, it is, oh it's God. ridiculous. <laughs> But you, listen, it is, and you're absolutely right, it is all about the power, and it's all built on a primitive fantasy that she needs that power in order to be okay with herself, and that takes away from the reality of the relationship. Yeah. So they're just in this dance built on this old stuff. Okay. All right, listen, it's, it's let's... It's also dangerous. It, you know, it's kind of dangerous. Well, the guy's what's so. flawed. The guy's a problem. Of course. Yeah. Let's gamble on when, when Dad left. All right. All right. All right. Let's pick a time. Yeah. Or you can go, Dad's uh, still around. You got any money? <laughs> Uh, Come on, baby. I do. This is the 90s. How much? <laughs> dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Only a dollar. Jesus Christ. I gave some kid 10 bucks today at a uh, falafel stand. Wow. Right. Huh? Why did you a give falafel? I just wanted to be a big shot. I was sitting there at uh, at a falafel. You know what I like about uh, going to uh, falafels? Okay, uh, I have three bucks here. The food is good, but uh, okay, I'm gonna need one of those dollars. But uh, the uh, Middle Eastern folks, uh, very abusive <laughs> in terms of service. <laughs> like, when's the last time you heard one of these guys say, "Thank you, come again"? That's what he's like, "What? What do you need?" Uh, All right, I want to know what, let's, what? what. What's your big bet? Oh, what's my big bet? Yeah, let's do the big bet. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm in the middle of my falafel story <laughs> okay. here, baby. Okay. Now you write a gamble. Yeah, all right. of a sudden, you got a gambling problem. Did when you I'm buy a falafel, falafel too? Story. I bought a falafel. Right. A couple of punk kids next to me. You bought them falafels They were broke. Too. I said, kids, help yourself. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Made yeah. me feel good. Yes, all right. Uh, where's my dollar? <laughs> Don't I need a dollar? I put here. Can you put another one in for me? Yeah. Okay. Let's pick an age. Where uh, Allie's uh, dad left or went to prison or got killed or got divorced. Well, when she when he moved out of the house. You want to go first, Drew? Mm -hmm. Four. <clears throat> Four? Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, it may not be he checked out in some way. Okay. He started drinking, he, uh, something. He checked started out working something. 85 hours a week yeah, or something. something. Yeah. Marissa, you can go with us uh, still around. Everything's fine. You don't, you know. She could yeah. just like older guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I don't think that it has much to do with that. Okay, so you, you're so saying that's my little bet. Dad's around. Yeah, da maybe Dad's around. She has no beef with Dad in her yeah. life, no problem. Right. Hey, t -t 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 -t. see, Drew, so you can't go moved out. You know, never know knew her dad because she has to bond with him a little before he before he takes off. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm going seven. And you could make the case that he was around that you know late thirties or something. So where would that put her? About seven, eight. I want to so. know if she's actually sexual with this guy. I'm going seven. Okay. Oh, yeah, she is. Allie? Yeah. Okay. Where's your dad? Okay. Um, my dad is still around. Ooh. Ooh. But? Um, the thing is, uh, well, I mean, recently he's been working a lot, but uh, no. I can't remember much of my childhood. How come? I don't know. I, I just don't remember anything from, like, ten under. <laughs> Except for like little itsy bitsy p bit, bits and pieces. And what do you remember in those bits and pieces? Things like a, a daycare or um, that's pretty much all I remember is like one incident at a daycare or getting a shot, and that's that's all I remember. I don't remember much of anything about my childhood. Don't you think that's a little peculiar? Uh, yeah, I do, and it's actually just come up in this past week that I don't remember much about my childhood. Well, especially. Do you have brothers <coughs> and sisters? Uh, no, I don't. I'm, an, I'm adopted. Uh, adopted? How old were you and you're adopted? Uh, okay. Little, little, little baby. Are you, how old? Uh, newborn to six months. Well, it's a big difference. It is? Huge. Well, between what? Newborn and six months. I, it is? I don't know my actual... Well, I don't, know. don't give me that puss every time Jeez, I ask a question, kids. Drew. You don't Maybe. know the age when you were adopted? No, I don't. And what was up with your biological parents? Um, I know my mother was 18... Uh, my dad, I don't know anything about. Okay, and what was what was your life like in your home with your adopted parents? See, see, I don't remember. <laughs> what do you think? What's your what's your sort of? Well, my mother actually gave me up. Oh, here we go. I remember when I was adopted. My mother gave me up for adoption at the time of my birth. My father didn't sign over his rights until like a month later. Uh huh. And. uh... But it, it's interesting because you're 18 years old and you, you're not remembering your childhood, mm. you know, uh, before 10. 
which is well, uh, a few years ago in the 90s. Yeah. Right. Y- you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it's, it's like, not yeah. like you're in your 50s and we're having to, you know, you went through a couple of wars or something. Yeah. Uh, this is You don't that remember far back. elementary school and stuff like that? I remember a little bit, but not much. Uh, do you think you were Usually this means someone was traumatized in some way. Oh yeah. Do you f- feel that does that ring a bell? Not that I know. Uh-huh. I really I don't remember much. All right, what's your dad do for a living? Uh he works for Bell South. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you said Bell North or East or West, that would have been a completely different <laughs> story. But does Bell your, South. Does your mom, uh-huh. does We're on to something here, guys. Yes, does Bell your, South. Does your mom work too? Uh, well, she used to be a teacher. Um, she's retired now. Retired. And uh, does your dad drink? No, not that I know of. And your mom doesn't drink? Nope. And uh, you just can't remember anything before 10? Not much. And do you have any weird uncles or cousins? Do you have any reason to, actually, you know? What, what does this 40-year-old man Wait, do? Actually, actually what? Actually, I'm the weird one of the family. In what way? Well, all right, my family's uh, southern plantation people, real deep south people. Yeah. Like Thomasville, Georgia type people. Yeah. Uh, I'm not at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I grew up around uh, southern Baptist people, and I'm pretty much a pagan. So I'm kind of like the family freak show. <laughs> mm. She's and you're breaking out now. <laughs> no kidding. So you're having sex with this uh, 42 year old guy? I have, yes. How's that? Yeah. You scared you're gonna kill him? <laughs> Marissa asked the question. What does he do for a living? Yeah. Uh, he works for Do Power. Do Power. Well, it's hard to work with nothing. You know what I mean? We ain't got nothing here. Well, there's a big something, but yeah. it's so, but what's, so, so what's big the we problem? can't see around it. I mean, it. It's, it is, but what's the problem? I mean, if it's going okay and you guys are getting on, it's not illegal. Um, no. Barely. Well, we met when I was 16. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, but let's be fair. He it's, was 40 at the time, not <laughs> okay. like he was 42. Okay, you guys have been together for two years then? Yes. All right, so no, match no. made in heaven. So. He'll die of prostate cancer in another four years, and uh, you'll outlive him by uh, 125 years. He's, so he's older. That's the big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I know it's not a realistic relationship. All right, good. That's good. it. Fine. You're healthy. Okay, good. <laughs> he treats you all right? Yeah, he does. He does. Um, I, I, he doesn't hit you with his cane or throw his teeth at you or do anything like that? Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, I'm turning 41 in a couple of days. He'll watch <laughs> That's why I worked it in. All right. Let's take well, a break. I, yeah. uh, let's give Marissa the money. Yeah. I mean, she was adopted, which is, in, in a way, the ultimate both parents leaving well, yeah, kind I of bet, thing. I but bet she was actually adopted when she was like four. I bet you. She said she so was, I uh, get the three dollars? She said yeah. she went. She's, the one dollar, really, because Adam right, actually owes you a exactly. dollar. Thanks. Well, I'll just uh, go ahead and plug Grown Ups. Okay. <laughs> That's a UPN Monday but night, also, 9 o'clock. I wrote a movie that's yeah. coming out on Some Tuesday. Girls. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. Some Girl. There was a movie called Some Girls. Right. I think so with we had Patrick to call Dempsey in it. Some Girl. Right. Okay. We'll and get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got to take a break. Oh, let's take a break. All right. We'll take a little break. Then we'll get to that. Hey, the man show's on tonight, right? That's yeah. right. Woo. That's my uh, other gig. That's my good show. <laughs> you know how, you know, like when there's twins, one of them's evil? And one right. of them's sweet as sugar. Right. The man show, that's a sweet one. Whatever. Okay. That's the good one. The evil one is uh, Love Line. That's uh, Comedy uh, Central. It's on right now. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, take a little break and then we'll come back. The National Football League and MBNA annually recognize teachers who have had a lasting and profound impact on their students. So profound that years later, NFL players remember the teachers who have influenced their life, making them a success both on and off the field. The NFL and MBNA congratulate those who educate the leaders of tomorrow. The NFL and MBNA, recognizing excellence among America's teachers. This message furnished by the National Football League. keeping you up, are we? I'm pitching a tent. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's Love Line. Oh. Hey. 
It is uh, the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Mm-hmm. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Marissa Rabisi is here tonight. Did you she. Want some uh, I'm good. Want some cake? <laughs> Honey, have some cake. Look at you. You're, like, what? You're emaciated. Have some cake. <laughs> she uh, She's doing a few shows. She's doing uh, one called uh, Grown Ups, and that's on UPN. That's Monday nights at uh, 9 o'clock. And she also co wrote a movie and is starring mm-hmm. in it. Am I right? Yeah, my brother's in it. It's called uh, Some Girl. And uh, Giovanni Rabisi is uh, her brother, who's a very talented actor, you know, from uh, Saving Private Ryan and Friends. And he's just, he's been in a whole, um, he was in The Mod Squad, right? The Mod Squad. The Other Sister, which is a fabulous movie. Yeah. No, I didn't I see it, but I heard it was good. Yeah, it was great. And The Mod Squad, which... Uh, yeah, well, whatever. Went the way of Mikhail's Navy. Right. <laughs> but uh, they'll keep them coming. Don't worry. Yeah. Once uh, Hollywood has a uh, proven uh, f- a recipe for failure, they'll mm-hmm. keep them coming. That's the beauty of it. But uh, anyway, uh, Michael Rappaport is in it, who's um, done a whole bunch of movies. I guess um, saw him uh, first as... Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, what the hell movie? Uh, Zebrahead. He was in Zebrahead. Then the Mighty Aphrodite, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And and who and who also uh plays a cop in Friends or who who has played right. a cop been, in Friends. He was on Friends too. And Adam Goldberg is also in Some Girls. Right. And he was on Friends. Yeah. yeah. And he was and he was in Saving Private, Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, uh, and Julia on our baseball team. Julia. Oh yes, Adam Goldberg was on <laughs> <laughs> God, he looks stoned out there in that field. Nah. Juliet uh, Lewis is uh, in this uh, too, by the way. Which yeah. is uh, now. So this is a movie you wrote. Yeah, I wrote it with my good friend Bree Schaefer. And That's great. Yeah, and it, um, we went to the LA Film Festival and won an award there. And mm-hmm. now it's it's coming out the Lemleys in Santa Monica on Tuesday. That's the right. Seventh, I think that is. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. And then it'll be at Blockbuster. <laughs> How does that work? You know, I don't really know, but it it works like that. But it's like, hey, there's a you know some pretty decent sized stars in this movie. A lot of uh, young people, some up and coming, but some who have been around for a little while. I know. And uh, you won you won an award. I know the film is and, actually uh, not wh- bad. It's like a good movie. Yeah, you know, why not just uh, release the thing? So they kind of are. They're releasing it in a small little way, and then I don't know. I it. it Independence, it's going into a whole new thing now, the way they're buying and selling and all that stuff. All right, so uh, you can see it at the uh, Lemley, or uh, uh, is it called the Lemmy? It, Lemley. Lemley. It's, it's Lemley, right? Yeah. Fourplex in Santa Monica. Oh, I see. That's an I. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was an I. All right, uh, where the hell are we? Next week. Lemmy was uh, the name of the singer from Motorhead, I think. Oh, okay. It's a different theater. Nick? Yeah, hello? You're 16. Nick, you're 16, man. What is up with you? Well, my, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely infatuated with this girl, and she's kind of my cousin, but, like, not a blood relative. Hey, Nick is somebody who got to me through drdrew.com, right? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah, okay. Sarah B. Or, right, okay. Um, I'll send it to you. So it's not really your cousin? It's just one of those people you think is your cousin growing up? No, she's, like, not a blood relative. She's, like, my aunt's niece, sort of. But- Say it again, Adam. So she's not really your cousin. She's just one of those people you think is your cousin growing up. Yeah, you just like your uncle. No, she's not my cousin. Our, our listeners are so goddamn stupid. Oh, they drive well, me nuts. No, wait, she's not blood related, but she's your cousin. Yeah, she just he just calls that, her right. his cousin. Okay, just like you have somebody named your uncle. It's not really your uncle. Like black guys call each other your brother. Brother, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, how'd you get so obsessed with her? What? How'd you get so obsessed with her? She's just beautiful. Uh, Okay. Does well, she, ask she, her out on a date. Well, does she give you attention? Sort when I see her. I don't see her that often. Do you, have you ever tried asking her out? No, because my she, my uncle married her aunt, but this was like before I met her. So you're afraid that because she's a relative now, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be right for you to go out with her? Sort of. Have you asked your parents about that? No, they're dead. They're dead. Uh huh. Well, this is why you're getting obsessed with stuff. What happened to your parents? They were killed in a motorcycle accident, like, a long time ago. Oh, my God. Who raised you? My grandparents. Oh, boy. Uh, Are things okay with your grandparents? I haven't talked to them about it. 
Why don't you discuss with them? But you're well. What are you going to do? Talking to his horn about uh, some chick you're you're it's, excited it's one, about? It's one of our listeners, grandparents, maybe thirty eight. So, <laughs> oh, please, Drew. How old are your grandparents? Um, like seventy five. Okay. Uh, hey, Nick. Yeah. How close to you does she live? Um, pretty far, like uh, thirty five miles. Thirty five miles. Do you have any kind of transportation? Got a car. Do you guys talk on Hold the phone? Hold on, a car? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you talk you... on the phone and stuff? Um, not very often. Okay. Uh, hey, Nick? Yeah? I know you're a little depressed. I'm ready to kill myself now, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what your deal is. You, there's this chick. You like her. You've known her your whole life. She doesn't live that far away. Well, you have her phone number. Why don't you just call her up and ask her if she wants to go out to lunch? Well, that's not why I originally called you. Oh, okay. Uh, well. Older, 21-year-old cousin slept with her, and I just found it out, found out, and at first I was all like, cool, you're a man, but now I can't get it out of my head, I'm obsessed, and yeah, I can't well. stop thinking about it, and now I'm all pissed at him. And this is your older cousin? Yeah. Who's not really her cousin either? And he knew you liked her? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh. How old is she? Um, 18, now. Uh-oh. 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 Now. Okay, but hey, Nick... Mm-hmm. Okay, here's here's what's going on. Uh, you're 16. You have a lot of obsessive energy. Oh yes. All 16 year old guys have have obsessive but energy. Especially depressed 16. You're very depressed, and all of oh. your here's the problem when you're depressed. You fixate on things. You get tunnel vision, and that is it. Because when you're busy and you're achieving, and there's band practice, and there's baseball practice, and there's uh, the speech and debate club, and you're dating, and, and there's tons of distractions going on, you don't have time to fixate. Yep. But when you're depressed and things aren't going well, and you've had some tragedies in your life, you fixate, and he is fixating. The, and there's, there's the, the, the the obsessions aren't going to go away, even if you were to establish a relationship with this young lady. It, it would probably just become worse. It would get worse. It would get a sort of stalking. She's 18. You know She's not going to date a 16-year-old. But we've all been there, like, with the heartbreak thing and all that. And you know what helps is go go out on dates with other girls. Right. Just get out there. But, but you notice when you suggest stuff like that to him, he goes, no, no, no. I have this other problem. He, he can't look at these things. He can't right. do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nick. He, he got it. He, it either that or it has it, to be treated. Is That's it, it. As out, hard yeah. as it is, just ask other girls out. Try not, to, activities. try not to weave her into the conversation. Go out with other six-year-old girls who are happy to go out with you. When I was about... Ugh. That's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 14, I was really depressed. I used to get obsessed about all kinds of weird stuff. And there was nothing... Nothing in reality could have taken those obsessions away because I was things were too much of a mess. Yeah, well, when you're too young. Well, well, when I would have my heart broken and someone not, else would come into the This picture. isn't about heartbreak. He doesn't yeah. have a relationship with her. Yeah. He, she's just somebody out there. It's just an obsession. Yeah, but it's it's why I sit around. But I think if yeah. she reached for him and she was just as much, he wouldn't be like that. He wouldn't be in the relationship. He would destroy it in some mm. way. Yeah. He would. I yeah. promise. Yeah. So, Nick, get some help and move on. And find other women, and leave your cousin, and well, her get, a, get a li- get a life, and not to be crass about it. And get get engaged. get a life. Yeah. And eighteen-year-old uh, women do not want to go out with sixteen-year-olds. Oh. End of discussion. And mm. unless they're me, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> you were uh, a different type but, of But listen, old. no, it's different type of sixteen-year-old. I was uh, the same kind of 18-year-old as I was a 6-year-old, though. But the thing about young people is is their nature is to get sort of obsessed with things. And when I sit around and Your life I is so dramatic watch, you know, yeah. during that time. Yeah, you're sitting around. I'm watching Movies Britney Spears or something or the Backstreet Boys. And I think to myself, oh, who gives a rat's ass? And I realize it takes an obsessive fan base in order to make, you know, Britney Spears or, or but in the whatever, whoever they are. But in a way, in a way that's are. the beauty of that age is everything is so intense, influential intense. and intense uh-huh. and, you know, you look back on it and you're like, God, I'm so glad I'm not going through that anymore. But, it, you know, in, in a way, embrace it, you know, because it's a learning time. Yes. Yeah, but how do you embrace yeah, obsessing over someone who's not interested in you? Well, what else are you going to do, you know? Well, I mean... Go I, take a walk or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That is horrible advice. Oh, no, Some of the worst sucks. advice no, we've ever had on this show. No, that's a very show. nice, idealized view of the world. <laughs> let, it, let it go on. <laughs> let it go on. Embrace your obsession. <laughs> Oh, come on. It's inspirational. Let yeah, it right. Right. You know, it's better than it's like better telling than... him he's depressed and you're, you're screwed and All the right. whole other thing. Go get treatment. Yeah. We normally tell him. All right, Waller in it. Enjoy it.
revel in it. Okay? We need to become more Get another picture of her and put it up on the wall. <laughs> Masturbate one more time a day to her. <laughs> As if there's not just powdered milk coming out of you now. You do one more to her. All right. Or don't ever call her again. Maybe she'll call you. No. Uh-huh. No. No. Okay. I would I would try to uh, implement that plan when I was 16. Be like, I'm never going to call her again. All right, it's been 15 minutes. I'm going to move. <laughs> I'm desperate now. All right, we're, we're, we're going to take a break. It's well, clear uh, Marissa's never been a desperate, obsessed 15-year-old male. What's that? No. I Marissa's haven't. never been a desperate, obsessed You don't know what it's male. like. Yeah, it's the difference. Okay. Yeah. We'll take a break. How old are you now, Marissa? Uh, I'm 24. We'll educate her during the break. Yeah. Let's go. We'll take a break. You have five seconds. Love line Fine. with Adam Coral and Dr. Drew. Two. Back in a minute. One. Man turns animal for the erotic pleasures of women. It's love line. All right. <laughs> This is Adam Goldberg, and you're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, you are. That is Adam Goldberg. Adam. Is your mic on? It, yeah, it is. And now it's on, yeah. Okay. Marissa Rabisi is uh, here. You know her Hi, from... Hi, kids. Uh, where do we know you from? Name uh, some of the other stuff you've done. Well, Daisy and Confused. Daisy and Fuse is my oh, first. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I yeah. love that movie. You do? It was a really good movie. It yeah, really it was. was. It was my high school experience. Oh, was it? Look, it's 1976, yeah. right? Yeah, that was it. It's when I graduated. <laughs> oh, wow. Did, did you see that, that was right then, man. That was right then, Did man. you see that movie? we were all <laughs> graduating that in the movie. Yes, sir. Did you yeah. see the movie? Yes. Yeah, did, that was it, right? That was it, yeah. The uh, fashion, the whole thing. The whole thing. And uh, Grown Ups actually is the uh, name of uh, Marissa's uh, new uh, new show. That is uh, UPN at 9 o'clock on uh, Monday nights. And uh, also Some Girl, which uh, is uh, going to be out at the uh, Limley, which yep. is in yeah. Santa Monica. 7th, 8th, and 9th of September. Go ahead, Drew. The one thing that the 70s shows, that all the 70s shows don't capture, though, is that it, there was just like a depression going on then. Like economically, it was everything was down. Nobody had jobs. There was no future. America sucked. Yeah. It was just a general there was dark that whole thing. tone. To everything it was just like, oh, we suck. Yeah. I know. So that movie really captured that. <laughs> it it yeah. even that it was it's kind of dead, but it really is even worse. It was a Our, darker tone. It, the scenes that we had, I had with Adam, were all about that. You know, life sucks. The seventies were hor- You know, they're horrible. Well, we just got done being. You know, getting our asses kicked in Vietnam, pretty yep. much. Yep. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, this word pollution sort of came in, right. and it was like the way the prog- uh, the prognosis was: uh, we ain't going to make it yeah. into the, in, into ninety, yeah. ninety one, right. maybe. The res- the oil resources are going to be dried up. The sun's going to burn out. We'll yeah. have a greenhouse effect. Yeah, we uh, suck. Kids are we're going to have to use respirators <laughs> yeah. to go outdoors. Our cars, you know, our cars are big giant bed tanks that suck, and the Japanese are kicking our ass there. Yeah, everything. And suddenly, a bunch of hostages in Iran. Everything right. sucks. Yeah, and if you look at like. Anything from the 70s, like especially the mid or early 70s, any of these school films or whatever. I mean, when I close my eyes and I picture any film of the 70s, I picture that Brown. polluted river Brown, a- I know. outside of the factory with the fish blo- <laughs> yes. floating in it. Yes, yes. all the, those it's, it's like Michigan. It was like, yeah, it was, it was like Michigan. It was one big yeah. smokestack yeah. with uh, the Indian crying. And we, went, right. we went to Pittsburgh, uh, what, a year ago, you and I? Yeah. And expect to see an image that we were used to. In the we were looking day. for the Indian who was crying. Mm. It turns out it was just a bunch of frat guys getting drunk <laughs> and everyone was having a good time. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Everything was brown or orange. Yeah. And and then the films were like coming home uh, in Deer Hunter all and all these really serious brown bummer. Tone brown tone to yes, And they yes, looked brown. brown yeah. Yes, the type of film they used was not what they used no. in any Busby Berkeley right. film. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. So we all uh, made it. Well, not you guys who are listening. Some of you were, thankfully, you weren't born, but your poor parents may have made it through the 70s. Shelly. Hi. You're 15. Yeah. What's going on? Well, okay. This is like really embarrassing. But first of all, I wanted to tell you that I love you guys. Here. What year were you born, Shelly? <laughs> 1984. Oh, my God. I, Scary, I huh? 
All right, go ahead. What? Just go. Nothing. Just tormenting I didn't know ourselves. that anyone was born in the 80s. What do you know from Troubles? You were born in 84. Go ahead. Oh, I know that plenty enough. People were dressing better and doing a lot of cocaine, making oh. a lot of money on Wall Street. Here we go. Okay, let's Shelly. go. Shelly. Okay, well, all right, I, like, have acne, like, down there, and I don't know what to do about it because it's not like you can put, you know, Oxy-10 down there. Or down where? Well, like... <laughs> Down there. <laughs> Please, you know what down there. Well, is. are we talking about? Is it on your thighs? Is it in? No, the, no. Like, is it in the hair, like the pubic area? Down more. Is it in uh -huh. the lips? Yeah, like right there. <laughs> okay, that those are things like Bartholin cysts. Those, that, none of this is acne, by the way. Because it's just weird. Because Shelly? Yeah. It's either shut up and listen. It's Go either ahead, like Jordan. carbuncles or infected follicles. You can't have a, a zit on your clit. <laughs> 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 or in your case, it sounds like some of the glands in the area around the vagina or in the vagina are getting clogged. Things like Bartholin's glands and skin. Well, glands. I bathe frequently, and uh, you know I understand. I'm, no, and I think you're a slob. And sometimes it requires some antibiotics to get this to clear up. It's not acne. You can get it in the surface of your thigh. There's all kinds of different skin infections you can get down there. But that's not. Yeah, you don't want to use Oxy Ten down there. You, you know, can't get zits down there. It's not acne. Hey, okay. uh, Shelly. Go to the doctor. How's the rest of your body with the acne? Well, it's like all over my back sometimes. But, I mean, my face, it used to be really, really bad, but it stopped because I'm taking um, tetracycline or whatever. Good. Uh -huh. But you made it something stronger than that. Okay. Yeah. And then it's, it's weird. Every time I use an acne medication, it works for a month, and then it stops. Are I don't you, know why. Are you seeing a dermatologist? Yeah. And every time they give me something, it works for a month, and it stops. You know, oh. I've used the creams. I've used that... That stuff in a little jar that you smear all over your face that smells like. Ugh. And Thank God, though, it's not the '70s. They didn't have anything. Jeez, the stuff that smells like. Ugh. I don't know. In the '70s, they said don't eat chocolate. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Which, by the way, has nothing to do with it. The, yeah. the dietary things. I know. Thank God, we're misled. I'm fit. Right. I, you know, I play sports. I eat well. I don't. I mean, yeah, it has nothing to do with that. It's hereditary. Well, it, yeah, it it's is. her. Whatever it is, it's her. And uh, hereditary. But wait, is that? I mean, she should go to the doctor. She needs to get back to the dermatologist. You may need to see a gynecologist or just a general practitioner kind of to, to have the sort of pelvic exam done to look at things, see what exactly right, but, is going but, but, on. But, 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 hot baths on time, being <laughs> hot, hot baths. Right? Okay, once a day. But Drew, yeah, but uh, um, <laughs> you have somebody who has the uh, acne on their back, on yeah. their face, yeah. is being treated for it. Now, don't you and think maybe area? there could be some connection between that in yes. that area? Yes. Oh, yes. But it's well, not. Well, you were saying, oh, no. It's not acne. Five minutes it's ago. It's not acne, though. Okay, but it's. There may be some connection. Some, uh, some If she didn't have any on her back, any on her face, and wasn't prone to it, do you think she would still have that problem downstairs? Well, are, I can't say. Oh, thank I, you. I, I think but, you know but, my but there, point. But there Let's are, move on. Listen, Carolyn? There are recurrent far uncles of the skin in that area I understand. Just throughout the body that can be sort of the result of certain bacteria and the skin is totally listening. different the skin is different yeah I mean, down there listen yeah. i've yes. been i've been with uh, okay I've been i down know you there. have i see i did that for like four minutes and i was kicked out but i went down there once Carolyn. oh that's right marissa adam and dr drew hi. hi marissa i just saw uh true crime a couple days ago oh cool stood out and I made a point of watching the credits to see who you were and it was you. That's so that nice. nice. Thank you. I get killed in that movie. Mm. I know, but I thought you were really great. Oh, thanks. So, <laughs> uh, I have a question, but um, first, Adam, I wanted to tell you that um, I think it was a few weeks ago, you talked to someone who worked for the circus who had been run over by the train. What? Yeah. What? Uh, I remember uh, that call. I wasn't here. What happened? He lost uh, both legs, I think, or one leg. He was drunk. And you expressed some doubt about the circus even having trains anymore, and I worked for the circus. No, I, I, I don't think I expressed doubt about that. A friend of mine just told me about it. I didn't even hear it. But I yeah. lived on the train for a year last year for Ringling Brothers. I was... Um, yeah, I understand uh, they move around via the train. Okay. I, I don't know why... I, I don't know why it... Uh, was uh, thought that I expressed doubt. Well, or maybe it was just my tone. But anyway, let's take a break. I okay. want to find out what she did with the circus. What What uh, did you do at the circus? I was the school teacher for all the children that travel with the. Oh, oh that is the most boring thing in the world. But you know what? She was the bearded school te uh, <laughs> teacher. Is what she didn't say. She was right, well, classes hanging by her teeth. <laughs> she was spinning around on that rope. Well, all right. We'll take a break and then we'll get 
too uh, backed about what they do to these horrible kids at the circus. Love line. Be right back in a minute. We're the G spot on your radio dial. Oh, you're yeah, right there. Love line on 1027. Oh. WEBN, oh. Cincinnati. Love line. I'm uh, Adam, and that's Drew. We're going to take a quick 10 second timeout, and then we'll be back with more of the fabulous show in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. It is Loveline. I'm Adam. Uh, that is true. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Marissa Robisi is here. She uh, has herself a new series on UPN called Grown Ups, starring uh, her and uh, the uh, man once known as Urkel. <laughs> Monday nights, uh, 9 o'clock. And um, also Some Girl, a movie that uh, she stars in along with uh, some uh, other notables, some uh, pretty good people. Her brother. Right. Your brother's in it, right? Mm-hmm. Giovanni. Giovanni and uh, Michael Rappaport, who um, you all would recognize in a second, and uh, Juliette Lewis and uh, a handful of other people. And this is going to be at the uh, Limley Theater in Santa Monica, September 7th, 8th, and 9th. And then uh, right to the Blockbuster. Right. So uh, Then you can rent it. And buy 11. Thought, you know what? Hey, what? that's great. People are going to see it. Yeah. On video. I think it would. I think yeah. they will. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how it works, but if they have in every blockbuster, I, I imagine, and like they put it up in the new release shelf, yeah, X amount. I mean, the, the, the place. I mean, you know, it, they're so uh, prevalent these blockbusters. I'm sure they're in every town and every city in this country. I know, and and also you make a film and it doesn't sell. It's kind of like why? Why did you put all of your everything into doing this project? And people can't see it, so now I'm actually like excited just for people to see it. All right, yeah. I'll rent it. Yeah. I never, I never can Go figure rent out how the rental, movie rental thing works. I walk into one of these blockbusters. It's you know, it's in the middle of uh, you know, it's on uh, Wilshire and Robertson. It's uh, 7,500 square feet. Two people. In it. There's two guys working there. The place is huge, and I'm thinking to myself, here's how they make money. I take this movie, and for two dollars and fifty nine cents, I got to bring it back in two days. Right, that's how they make uh, their money, man. The, the, I buy movies now the, because I I never return them. I, so I know it. it's based on people getting stoned and not bring it back. Because if everyone just brought everything back on time, I swear to God, the lease alone on these blockbusters. I mean, first they got to build them. And then they're huge, and they're right in the middle of everywhere. And yeah. you know the, the real estate is prime, and they got to be paying twenty grand a month just uh, to lease the space. I mean, how and many if movies? you never if you never return it, they bill you like a hundred and something dollars. That's that's where they get you. <laughs> yeah, they get you. They really do. Yeah, you uh, you you got that uh, Willie Ames Scott Bayo movie. Uh, what the hell was that movie? Jinxed or. Uh, <laughs> what is the, what is the name of that movie where if you rent it as a joke? He has like some sort of uh, mental powers that lift girls' skirts up. You know, it was uh, made in uh, 1981, and it's in you know it gets your car gets stolen, and it's been in the, it's in the back of the car or something. And uh, yeah, the movie is worth like the movie cost 111 dollars to make, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they want that's what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a killer. Mm -hmm. I should do that. Now that I have money, that's what I should do, and then just laugh like a madman when I uh, pay them off. So All right. Carolyn, now i got to think of the name of that movie. Carolyn? Carolyn teacher. Oh, yeah. Circus. She's uh, 30. She okay. works for the circus. Yeah. Zapped. Zapped is the name of the movie. This Zapped. Thank you. Zapped. That, I, I remember that. Yeah, I said jinx. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I should have known. Carolyn, and Drew, are you kidding me? Oh, please. Jesus what the hell Christ. are you talking about? All right. That was during my... Uh, no help. That was during my detached years. Mm -hmm. Just quiet. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question. Uh, a good friend of mine and I are both avid listeners of the show. In fact, uh, he has turned around his whole life because of the show, I no think. No way. Why? Uh, well, okay. It's not Do me a favor. Have him send something in at drdrew.com. I will get in touch with him, okay? I'm into drdrew.com. Well, we'll get you. Um, 
Okay, well, he just... Well, let me just go to my question. I'll kind of follow from that, I think. All right. Um, we're both adopted, we're, and uh, we're both adopted from birth, but we've noticed some simil similarities in our relationship patterns. It sort of basically resolves around an inability to establish and maintain long-term romantic relationships. All right. But we were both adopted as... Oh, I was adopted as a baby at eight days old. Yeah. But I haven't never had a relationship longer than a year. I'm sort of the preemptive strike queen. Mm -hmm. As soon as something seems like right. a little bit wrong, then psh, right. goodbye. Right. Mm -hmm. so I was just wondering if there might be a connection. Those eight days that I wasn't anywhere was that, you know, lost time where I wasn't making a bond, where I'd find, I decided I was alone in the world and, and uh, there was no one for me and so on and so on. Yeah. I mean, well, the thing about being adopted is, is uh, not only you have nature and nurture working against you. I mean, on, on one one side, well, it's like, hey, you were adopted, you were torn away from your biological parents, and blah blah blah, and raised by people that weren't your parents, so you got that working against you. And then the other part is, is your parents are, you know, probably alcoholics or losers or. Explain to me the opposite way, whereas you're lucky because your parents who couldn't take care of you loved you enough to give you up and your yes. who desperately wanted you loved you so much. Yes. No, yeah. I, I agree with that. But the yeah, fact sort is, of. Although so I always say they were too screwed up to raise you, not that they loved you too much But are you to blaming, raise you themselves. are you blaming that for how your behavior is now? I'm just wondering if there could possibly be a connection if those eight days are so, I know that Dr. Drew says that that Early time is so important. Yeah, but it, it, eight days. Yeah, yeah but there plenty. Let's put it this way: there are plenty of kids that spend weeks on ventilators in ICUs, and yeah. people all they get is their you know sort of gloves touching them, and they they turn out okay. So in all, it can contribute. Yeah, well, I understand, but it can contribute. And again, as Adam has pointed out, maybe there's some genetic predisposition to this sort of thing. Anyway, some sort of sensitivity. But be that as it may, you wonder more about the quality of connection that you have with your parents early on anyway. My current parents? Your, yeah. Your bi adopted parents. And that there was something more chronic about the way you develop relationships going on. Well, I've listened to the show for a long time, and I don't believe I have any of the drastic... No, no, not drastic. I mean, look, you have relationships. You just you just uh, are, are gun-shy. Right. You don't want to get hurt. You're, you don't like being vulnerable, and you're vulnerable to a point, and then you bail out. Mm -hmm. And some of that may be based on reality. Guys are yeah. kind of screwy, and uh, they can hurt you, and that, that's all right. Especially uh, the circus uh, variety. <laughs> oh, I yeah. mean, you know, you're dating circus guys. No. Not I, only... I, are you in love with this guy, or is he just a friend? or? What? Well, I mean, I'm not talking about a specific guy. I'm just talking yeah. about In general. Have well, you, who have, are you meeting? Have though? the choices been any good? Have the guys been decent? Or are you making bad choices? No, I think they've been they've been good choices. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, then discipline yourself and stick with. And then it. you got to hang in. You just yeah, got to force do, yourself. Yeah, you do. Because I've in. been there too, man. I know. What that okay. Let's <laughs> talk about the circus. We're not that worried about you. We think you're okay, Carolyn. All right. Yeah, yeah. you're fine, except for the circus. <laughs> except well, for what? your job choice. How many kids work for the circus? Um, it totally varies for you know within the tour, but I had about 20 kids, mm -hmm. and it was split into two classes: elementary and high school. I had wow. Well, it was like, and what do the, the the circus kids do? They with the uh, flying uh, walinas and they jump up on the elephants. And the older ones were mostly performers there in the show, either trapeze or inline skaters or uh, unicycle. And the younger ones were mostly children of performers or children of concessions people or children of backstage people. Oh, I see. Because they got to travel too. How was the level of uh, education you're able to maintain? It's for them? horrible. Uh. It's. It's pathetic. Well, listen, when you got the trapeze, what the hell do you need uh, ABCs for? <laughs> There's the whole group that, were, you know, have been in a circus family for hundreds of years. Uh, goes back hundreds sure. of years. The parents don't care about well, the education because they're just going to go into the circus life. Really? Yeah, well, listen, they're from Hungary. What do they care? And, and, and <laughs> I, I know. And they're making more money doing this than they would be if the guy got his high school. <laughs> listen, here's what education is. Education is making a living. It's so you can make a living. It's also it so you can have a, a, a society that can... Uh, it can same as in athletics. I mean, they're not, it's they also have a society that can govern itself. Yeah, thank you. You know, you can't... If you don't have an educated society, you should not be self-governing. You should have a monarchy. Yeah, but you're, you're... There's a difference between wisdom, experience, and education. And, you know, show me somebody who is intelligent and who does what they do well for a living, and I'm fine with that. 
I know plenty of people went to college and aren't that smart, and so they picked up a few tidbits. It's almost trivial. I mean, in, in a way, it's almost like, well, you might as well just know about sports or something. You know, it's like, what's the difference between knowing how many yards Roman Gabriel threw for in the 70s and knowing the year the Civil War started? If you really break it down, I mean, in an, in an everyday sort of application. So I'd rather people just do something well. These kids grow up into this family. They uh, fly around on the trapeze. God bless them. And they're from I Hungary. Agree, what do you actually. want? I disagree because that education education should not be about uh, learning facts. It should be learning process, how to think analytically, how to read well. I don't know. Abstract. That, yeah, but you, That's you, the important part of education. We always talk about, you always tell me about how education teaches you how to think, but I never... Uh, I know you never exposed to that. I never was exposed I to that. And I, I, don't, I don't really buy into it completely. Because most education in this country doesn't do that right. You're right. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know how well you can teach somebody oh, to, to yes. think. Oh no, please! What do you mean, please? You can. How do you do that? You you have to really challenge them. You well, you to... can teach them to apply themselves, and you can teach them to dedicate themselves. Well, let's talk off the air. I'll, I'll talk. No, I don't want to talk. <laughs> do we have to talk off the air? Sometimes you have to talk to me. Okay, but we'll not talk off about the air. Thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, as long as we talk about cars. You promise we're talking about cars? Yeah, uh, a little bit. Bill? Yes, hello? You're 22. <laughs> <laughs> I love these things. And I have a few questions. It's the way I worked the caller's age in <laughs> discreetly. Go ahead, Bill. Well, you know, uh, my ex-girlfriend's sister just gave me a call today, and you won't believe this, but... Ex-girlfriend's sister. Mm-hmm. Yes, and she gave me a call, and she, you know, told me that my ex was diagnosed now, I swear to God, it's true. Mm -hmm. Gonorrhea, syphilis, and herpes. Mm. Why, did the ex, why did the ex call you herself? Hat trick. Well, you know, I don't know why she didn't call me herself or anything. Or And she knew about this when we were together. Now, this was about six or seven months ago. And mm -hmm. I'm just finding out today. This is a this is a old diagnosis. This, uh, ye, well, the diagnostic is, yes, it is an old diagnosis that she got a while ago and as guess is re also now has just reoccurred too so well bill the story does not hang together at all at all did you have yourself checked because gonorrhea and syphilis are easily treated with in antibiotics in the vast majority of cases with a single dose in most cases in fact oh, okay. and and that's it that's gone and to have those two conditions recur in the same person nope uh-uh now, herpes obviously is a chronic condition that's going to be recurrent, and you either got that or you didn't. Okay, I have not had any symptoms at well, all. It's possible that you have it even so, so you have to be careful and really practice safe sex techniques. But this story just doesn't hang together. Well, what were the circumstances in which you broke up with your ex? Uh, she's kind of emotionally unstable. Yeah. Her sister's probably emotionally unstable, too. Yeah. <laughs> and why did you break up, and how did you break up? Uh, well, one of the issues was she has a kid, and I, didn't, I don't get along good with kids. Uh, another issue was uh, the maturity level was a little low, and when we first met, uh, it was his friend, and I thought, figured well, that's all we would be. And it progressed to more, and it, it, it bothered me, too. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to, but it just kind of occurred, and, you know, it progressed to more. So what ended up happening was uh, I kind of looked at our situation, and it, it there's a lot of different factors. Uh, Bill, please. You left her suddenly in a painful way. She's pissed. Yeah. Okay. okay there All you right. Go. <laughs> are you, are you, Bill, it's called inappropriate and diabolical left. Are, are you by? No. You don't like guys? I don't like guys at all. Why are you asking that question? Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> well, spidey sense is tingling. All right. All right. Uh, Bill, you're fine then. Well, what, you may not be fine. You, what yeah, you, you should do? be checked. Uh, but you, I, I, first of all, you're 22. You should know a little something about STDs and how they work. And well, I don't know. If I got this phone call, I'd be alarmed. Secondly, the phone call is from the sister of the pissed off girlfriend. It's just, come on. He's just, she's just getting at him. Uh, getting you, by the way, you would it's be, you so would be, easy. you, the syphilis, you'd probably be contacted by a public health department. That really were the case. You would be. You could You well mean be. if they treat someone with syphilis, they it's say who are your partners? Yeah. You have to report it? I what are the do. reportable diseases? Oh, so, uh, you know, hepatitis C and B. Sure. And syphilis. I think gonorrhea is too, actually. Okay. 
Let's, but uh, and the herpes, you know, he shouldn't get herpes again. Like, uh, oh, she just got herpes, gonorrhea, and syphilis. Come on. Okay, well, you're not dealing Come with on, a lot uh, of uh, education, as we were talking about before. They were educated <laughs> in the circus. <laughs> that's got to be. A, that's got to look good on the resume. Where'd you go to high school, circus? Ooh. <laughs> Phil, come here. Why don't you look at this resume? This is a good one. <laughs> Angel. Yeah. You're 20. Yes. What's going on? Um, my wife just left me. And I don't know what to do. She left me with both our children, which the youngest is three and a half months. Oh, jeez. And the older one's two years old, and they're both girls. And I had all brothers, and, well, basically, I'm not calling to find out how to raise them. Basically, what I'm calling for is to find out, would it be fair, since she's only been gone for three weeks, would it be fair for me to find a girlfriend now? Should I wait, like, oh, come on. a period of time or something? Wait three and a half weeks. Wait three and a half? Yeah, find one on uh, Sunday. On Sunday. Sunday's good girlfriend day. And if you can't find one Sunday, you get one Monday morning when they're fresh. <laughs> you know, the girlfriend cart just went by. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you find a girlfriend, you know, like now? Is how do that... I find a girlfriend like now? Uh, start looking. I haven't been looking. Yeah. I've just been here at home and just trying to keep my head up because I've been really depressed. Why did she leave you, your wife? A third affair. Third affair? My good friend. And, uh... And you're going to break up with her over her third affair? Uh, her third affair, we're getting our divorce. We've only been married three and a half months, but we've been together three and a half years. But listen, how old is she? Um, 20. Uh, we're both 20. 20. Listen. Uh, and two kids. Angel, when I'm in charge, I will have women like that sterilized. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. She's obviously screwed up. Yeah. Something horrible must have happened to her growing up. She had these three affairs being um, pregnant, too. I mean, didn't she just she, have a and, kid? And then she left two kids without... With yeah. and without any emotion. Now, here's the deal. And she, the kids are with her? Well, first of all, well, they're with him. I have them. She signed the divorce paper with no... I didn't have the kids with me. She hasn't seen them in three weeks. And oh, okay. For like three weeks. Yeah, she's, she has a serious problem, and she should be sterilized. Well, she also should be seen by a psychiatrist. I, mean, I told her that. I, it's kind of obvious that something is totally wrong, because she just no emotion. Uh, where's her dad? I say go get another girlfriend. One of those. He's an alcoholic. He smokes pot, but he's one of those I have an answer for everything kind of uh, retired veteran kind kind of guy. You know? Yeah, I'm sure he well, had done horrible things to her. This could be a form of postpartum depression. I, I have seen some very bizarre behaviors and personality changes in women the first few months after pregnancy. Me too. And it's possible this is all related to that. There may not be a specific uh, character logic issue. That's what you're digging into. My mom was in a funk for 20 years. After she gave birth to you, you understand that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as soon as I moved out, you know, I think uh, she started to step she, back a little. It's interesting how she got so much better. Pure that. coincidence. Pure coincidence. Do you have any help with the kids? Do you have help with He's the kids? Gonna no. need it. He's going to need it. But listen, this is an awful, awful situation. He, she needs a very careful evaluation. Three people's, four people's lives depend on her getting appropriate uh, medical uh, care. He's 20. Social services need to be contacted to make sure that he gets enough, whatever's available to help him out with this task of parenting. Well, we should all pitch in as a society and help everybody. We will. Don't worry. <laughs> so you better don't, pay me now or pay me later. Don't right? worry. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I just have these fantasies. I'm going to run for something one day. Oh, yeah, really? I swear to Christ, I'm going to run for something. <laughs> Adam Kroll <laughs> and Jesse Ventura are... <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I was. I was sitting on my sofa watching uh, like Nightline tonight or 2020 or one of these shows, and you know they were talking about what's wrong with the uh, social welfare system in New York, and this one woman who had five kids killed one of them, and it should have oh. never happened, and they were uh, blaming the system, uh, and the kid uh, fell through the cracks, and it's like, listen, as long as you have crack whores having five kids, wanting to kill one of them, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's mama. <laughs> Let's talk more about mama than the system. Yeah, yeah we're all supposed to, what are we going to do, kill ourselves because this bitch has five kids and decides to kill one of them? And it's a big problem because, so you know, the, the uh, system wasn't in place and what happened and uh, what are we to do and uh, who's to blame? I'll tell you who's to blame. Her the dad. chick who had the five kids and her dad and the guys, the five guys who knocked her up. That's who's to blame, you idiots. And I swear to God, I'm going to get up on that podium and I'm just going to say, listen, uh, you can talk about all the reform you want. 
I'm going to nip every one of these goddamn problems in the butt. And that's one woman that they're bringing to our attention. Uh, out of how many women how many live m- in Los Angeles? How many in millions. Millions. Okay? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's the Five making kids. this world seem a lot more dangerous than I think it actually is. Here, Here's the problem. Uh, on the third kid, that's when you start sterilizing the crack whores. <laughs> That's uh, that's that's how that's my policy. By the way, I'm gonna have a little pie chart. Let's see, uh, gypsies. Uh, they get six kids before I, I, I do. A homeless, uh, four kids before I come in and sterilize. Uh, let's see, three kids. Let's go across here. Yes, yeah, serial killers and crack whores. They get sterilized at three kids. Jesus Christ, five kids. And, and oh, the system. What happened to the system? Yeah. What the hell are you supposed to do? You're living with five kids. You decide to kill one of them. You know, is that really the system? Or isn't it the bigger problem, you getting knocked up constantly? I, 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 I'm going to put something in the water. You know, my plan. What is it? I want to know. I'm going to put a sterilization agent in the following foods. Corn dogs. <laughs> because I don't want people eating corn dogs uh, raising kids. Uh, if you eat corn dogs, here's the deal with, with the corn dogs. You can no by the way, children. you're either too young to have kids or you're retard, right? <laughs> Mountain Dew, Jolt. Perfect. This is actually great. That uh, that Fruitopia, that stuff tastes like just uh, fried hell. That's like a 10%. Uh, it's just all sap and syrup. Uh, Sunny Delight. S- certain jerkies. Certain forms of jerky. Right. Slim right. Jims. Slim Jims. Those any pork rhyme things, things that have too many uh, that we've never even tried products uh, in them. Right. Yes, Funyuns. Uh, Funyuns. I am well. Uh, yeah, because stoners shouldn't be having uh, kids either. And Slurpees. Tap and water. Tap water. Because if you can't afford to uh, suck some of that sparklets out of the bottle, I don't want you having kids. Kit, and, good. And what I'm gonna do is now if you want to eat one corn dog a year that's not going to render render you sterile right you so have like to baseball eat baseball games they won't be sure go to a ball game have a corn dog right. no You're problem safe. everyone hey you, you want to smoke a bong load and go on a go on a munchy run fine but if you eat x amount of corn dogs or let's say you ate x amount of corn dogs you washed it down with x amount of mountain dew or right. sunny delight or another right. one of those what i like to call or you them. have them every night for dinner with nap right. right right what i uh, like to call i uh, refer to as nectar of the tards uh <laughs> this uh, this stuff and uh, a lot of these you know colas uh, these jolt ones and these uh, fast paced uh, sports drinks you know things like drinks that are uh, iridescent in their coloring. Yes, yes. I will put a sterilization agent in all of these. And these people who consume enough of this will not be able to reproduce. And we will be living in a goddamn utopia inside of 10 years. I, I don't believe me. Think think about what the think about the uh, breed of cat that uh, puts down a couple hundred gallons of Mountain Dew or uh, Sunny Delight every year. <laughs> You want that guy raising people? He can't even figure out what to put in his mouth. And uh, that whole taste thing, you know, that they always work into. Hey, listen, don't judge this person. They like this movie. They like this drink. They like this food. Who are you to say? I'm telling you, they're retards. (laughs) I am telling you. That end of discussion. Don't give me that clock. I'm on a roll, you ass. See, sucker. Please. (laughs) Please, the temerity with the clock. I'll clean this country up. But here's the way we clean it up. Sterilization. That's it. Forget about building prisons. Forget about welfare systems. Forget about what we're going to do with all these. We can't do anything. Listen, if a crack whore has five kids, there's not a goddamn thing we can do with those five kids. Forget it. They're going to jail. They're all going to jail. The chicks are getting knocked up and getting into prostitution. The guys are getting violent and going to jail. There's not a goddamn thing we can do about it. And they're having five. They're not just having one. We got to get at the nest. That's it. Do we want to run around chasing roaches our whole life? Or do we want to go for the nest? We go for the nest. (laughs) That's what I'm running on. I didn't, and right believe on. me, and anyone who wants to break this down into some sort of color thing or some sort of racist thing can kiss my ass. I don't care what color the roach is. I'm going for the nest. That's it. That's going to be the policy. Mm-hmm. And we could clean it all up. 
I mean, uh, prison population, welfare, unemployment, it all just magically go away. We could all sleep with our windows open at night, and we leave our car keys right in the ignition when we left it in the parking lot. We'll still have to do the policy of uh, two 911 calls per domestic uh, address. You get two 911 calls a year. Third... Cops are coming over, and they're putting a bullet in you. Right. I don't care if your granddaughter's getting raped. It's like, uh, I hate to see her get raped over there, but it's the third call. They just put you down. Yeah. We don't have the cops babysitting everybody. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. When you look at their faces, you will see it loud and clear. Dedication, commitment. These are the qualities shared by everyone who has ever played or coached high school football. It's about working together and doing whatever it takes to earn a little respect. Most of all, it's about enjoying yourself, win or lose. The NFL is proud of all high school football players and coaches who give their all. While the kids get more than a few football thrills, it's even more important that they learn their share of life skills. High school football, it's in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. Love Line, Matt and Crowell and Dr. Drew. Phone numbers 1 800 Love 191. We'll be right back. Oh, you're right there. It's Love Line. Oh. On W. Oh. What do you mean you're separated? Oh. Are you married? No. No. I met her when I was in the Marine Corps and. You know, I, I lived with her for a few months, and she got pregnant. Right. Okay, and mm-hmm. y- you you decide not to live with each other anymore. Right. And, and But you're still dating. Is that correct? Well, there's no affection or there's nothing there. Yeah, okay, so the, the thing's over. You know, we'd think, we thought that it would be best if we tried to, you know, do the parent thing, try to live together, sacrifice things. Okay. Well, listen, you paid your dues. You put in, uh, what, uh, six months, and <laughs> it didn't work out. That's the best you could do. All right, so, listen, you, there's no passion. And uh, I, I, wait a minute. Uh, but it just doesn't sound like there's anything here. He didn't, for him. He didn't want to get her pregnant. He wasn't. He's not that interested in her. You know, and that's supposed to be like so. What's that? on the depot. The she was on the depot. Yeah. All right. That's going to be another uh, two years of therapy for the kid uh, when he finds out about uh, but we're trying to do the, the depot. It's so hard because we just don't know what the best thing to do okay. is. Okay. Well, now you have to be the best uh, broken up dad you can be. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And she's thinking she doesn't want a, a divorce situation. Yeah, well, here, here's here's it what... it could be worse off for the child if you guys are not doing well living together. When you say you're not getting along, what happens between you two? Well, we get along to a point, but there's... And then what happens? There's... I mean, what do you mean, what happens? Well, what you said we're not getting along is very elusive, sort of. Things that, like, I like to do, for example, I like to play soccer, I like to go snowboarding, I like to do this. And um, she's so tied up in work, but she works a, you know, she works at 7, she gets up at 4... Right. Her work's hectic, but... Okay, so... Wait, 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 wait Rick, well, he Rick. Does, he does have a point. He wants to go he snowboarding. Yeah, Rick, you're dad now, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but he wants to go to play you're soccer. Dad, she works a short day. She's done it four, for crying out loud. Support Be a dad. Your you're, you have a You have a child now. Uh-oh. That, but snowboarding is like a once-a-month thing. Yeah. Uh, so what is the problem in this relationship? Well, there's soccer. When it's... it's soccer? Two hours on a Sunday. Yeah, So okay. what's the problem? Well, then what's the problem? That... She gets a little mad. She's like, oh, you want to go do this instead of raising your son. All right. But I think okay. I'm doing every normal day thing. Rick, Rick, <laughs> you please uh, stop me if I'm out of line here. But you're not really that interested in this woman. Or right. The, or the child. And you're, you're somewhat interested in the child. I mean, on paper, you'd like, you don't want to be an abusive father and you'd like everything to work out. But it's like you're young. What? You're 24 years old. And you just kind of like to live your life. I want to live my life, yes. Right. Okay. So you're sort of half committed. And the problem is, uh, in this day and age, people do it all the time. It's not like you are uh, you become a pariah or something if you don't raise your your kid. Orientated. Although it should be. Mm. And uh, you figure, okay, so I'll send her a couple hundred bucks a month. I'll see the kid uh, on the weekends. And all right. You get to go snowboarding. I see him every day. Okay. All right. But the, the point is, is you are not interested in this woman. Right. Okay. And, and it's not 
and she is interested in Rick, and she's using the kid right. to sort of say, yeah, listen, exactly. either you stick with me or Leverage you never that. see the kid again. Yeah, there's some of that. And here's the reality with Rick. Uh, she was supposed to be on Depo. Right. God only knows if she was. Right. She probably just took one of those razor nick band-aids right. and stuck it to her arm, you know, and claimed Spots. she was on Depo. And uh, she was interested in sort of getting pregnant and landing Rick and getting a, getting a husband. And Rick was like, hey, it's some bitch I'm dating, and uh, she's good for a few laughs. And lo and behold, she's pregnant, so we ought to live together and ought to try to do what's right. But he ain't in it. He's just mm -hmm. not interested in her. So... He's got to try to be the best dad he can be, but I, I don't think uh, they should live together if he ain't interested. No, no. No, and it's I think it has an effect on the child, too, if you guys aren't getting along. Right. Drew, do you have to throw the keys uh, on to the uh, console there? You couldn't set them on the console? You know, we've talked about, you know, with you and the uh, incessant noise making. They have to actually toss the key. Yeah, that's, that's, right. what, I'm, that's what I mean. Like... I have these uh, discussions with Drew about doing radio sometimes, and uh, you know, so you, so you take the key off your chain and you set it down on the console. But Drew actually is like, Drew actually All tosses right. them right, on there. Right. So, I mean, who's been doing radio longer? That's my point. You've <laughs> lost your edge, brother. Drew said, "Here's how Drew sets his coffee mug down." By the way. <laughs> He doesn't even begin. Like, if he was at your house, you'd be pissed. Like, uh, quiet down, would you? <laughs> All right. Okay. We're swapping cars tonight. I'll give you the key. You want to go joyriding uh, with me tonight in the Drew Mobile? The Drew Mobile, yeah. We'll go up to the lake. What kind of car is it? BMW. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Fold the seat down. Right. Yeah. You do? <laughs> Sarah? Yes. You're uh, 28? Yes. What's going on? Well, um... A few months ago, uh, to be exact, April 24th, I was raped by a, a school friend. And um, at the time, my husband and I were trying to conceive. And I am pregnant now. Oh, boy. And my due date is January 10th. And I'm trying to figure out the odds of this child being the, um, uh, the rapist. Does your husband know? Yes, he does. About the rape? Yes, he does. Hmm. Does yeah. he worry about that? I am very worried about it. Did you take the morning after pill or anything after the rape? Uh, no, I did not. Why not? Well, at the time, I didn't even know about it. Didn't know about the rape? The no, morning no. after pill. After pill. What are you? You're well, stupid as our callers are, but I, I'm being somewhat facetious. The, the point is, if you're raped, you go to the emergency room, you get a forensic examination, they give you the morning after pill. I did not go to the emergency room. Mm-hmm. And you're raped by a, a friend of yours? Yes, uh, yeah. Oh. Was it like a violent rape? No, it wasn't. When were you raped before? When was I raped before? <laughs> yeah. Or abused in some fashion? I was 12. You were 12. Last rape or last abuse? Because that was a rape when you were 12? Yes. Yeah. And what happened before 12? Uh, nothing that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Who raped you when you were 12? A stranger. One of those odd cases. To a violent rape. Yeah. How old was he? I don't know. Did you report it... that one? Uh, no. Okay. Didn't tell anybody. For Definitely it. something happened before she was twelve. Where's your dad? He's not around. What? Why did he leave? When I was little. Uh, he was an alcoholic, and my mother divorced him, and I rarely saw him. Do you think he might have done something to you? Um, I don't think so. Did you ever talk to your mom about that, or she ever say anything about that kind of thing? No, my mom and I don't have a. a really good relationship as an intimate I guess an intimate relationship we don't talk very much how come uh, I don't know is she an alcoholic too no any stepdads yes how were they um they were well he was fine but um when I became a teenager he uh he just he tried to control me too much mm-hmm I, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, when I was younger, he would play with me and all that kind of stuff. But he, when I grew up, he changed. All right. And you never you never saw your real dad? I saw him maybe every summer until I was about 13, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's it. Yeah, there really wasn't a relationship. All right. Yeah, yeah listen, you, yeah. Sarah, you really shouldn't be trying to have kids. There's a real pattern here. Of you, you got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, it was... 
I, I know people listen She's and they go, though, this right? poor girl's been raped and here you are coming down on her. But, and you, you were raped, but there's something we knew. And what's the first thing we said? When were you raped? Before. Before this. Right. And, and there's, a, there's a serious pattern you got going here. And there's a lot of stuff to deal with. And it doesn't seem like you've dealt with a lot of it. Does it? Um, no, I haven't dealt with a lot yeah. of it. And and you know, when you when you don't when you just have kids and you don't deal with it, then they just kind of deal with it. Right, they absorb all that. What are the chances of this guy being the father? I I don't. Uh, who knows? I mean, you're having sex with your husband and trying to conceive the same time this guy raped you, right? Yes. This this friend of yours. Ex friend, yeah. Who you never brought any charges against. Right. And. Well, I felt, um, well, I still feel like it's partially my fault. Yeah. Why? I, I feel like I let him on. Oh. I tend to be flirtatious. Okay, but that's still no excuse for rape, right? Right. And how's your husband dealing with this? He's not dealing with it very well at all. Yeah. Something And something also leads me to believe that you're looking for a little chaos with your husband, yeah, if you really think about right, it. Right, and is, even the question of how, what are the odds that, uh, that what, what exactly are the odds that this guy got me pregnant? He got me pregnant the week that matches the ninth, you know, the 45th week of my, of my pregnancy. I wonder what the odds are. Yeah. And what were you doing out with him instead of with your husband trying to, quote unquote, conceive? We were studying together for a class. Right. How long have you been with your husband? We've been together, I was 15. Since and we've been married for eight years, since yeah. I was 20. And, and really? Um, God, and do you, do you feel like you're trying to f insert a little chaos into this relationship? Uh, not that I know of. You mean like with the kids or, you know, feeling like it's too much? No. No. Do you have any other kids? No. Oh, good. All right. So, how pregnant are you now? I am twenty-one weeks. Okay. Well, what is that? Four years? <laughs> how many? How long is that? Twenty-one weeks? Five months? Can't yeah, oh, almost. Yeah, about five months. They will. The child's they born. They can't do any. You just gotta wait till the kid's born, then, Sarah. Just five months. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I don't know what to tell you. You kind of knew what was going on in a certain way. And, I mean, you really should have went to the hospital, and you, or you should have just got the morning after pill after this guy well, raped you. You should have reported hospital. him. You should have done all those things. And, uh, you know, imagine if you're the husband. You're trying to conceive with your wife. She comes back. She's like, uh, I was raped. Uh, what happened? You know my buddy Bob? We are studying. Yeah, he raped me. <laughs> uh, did you call the cops? And uh, what? No, no. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It's kind of like... Yeah, are you sure? Uh, uh, maybe just were you just having sex with Bob? <laughs> I mean, why didn't you just freak out? And just you know. Uh, I swear to God, if I were a chick, I, I know it sounds pathetic, but I, I swear I would use that as an excuse. It's like, you know that uh, model chick that lives down the street? <laughs> yeah, she, she raped, raped me. me. <laughs> <laughs> really? You want to call? Let's not get the cops involved. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get. You know that chick we had on Love Line the other night? That hot actress chick? Yeah. Write me after the show in the party line. <laughs> no, let's not get the police involved. <laughs> let's just pretend it didn't happen. We'll move on. All right, I just want to take a shower and masturbate. I mean, I mean, just take a shower. All right, we'll be back. We'll be right back. It's not hard to swallow. We've got a frog in our throat. Lick it up. It's Love Line. W E B M. Love Line. Oh, that's some funky music. Marissa Robisi is uh, here. Hello, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Grown Ups, uh, the appropriately named sitcom, is uh, what she's in Monday nights on UPN at 9 o'clock. And also, Some Girl. Which uh, is uh, it's going to be out for uh, ten minutes, and then it's going right <laughs> to the local <laughs> blockbuster. After uh, I think September fourteenth, it's is a tragic it love story too. And it's got uh, Michael Rappaport, Juliet Lewis, uh, Marissa, of course, Giovanni, her brother. It's got some uh, some pretty talented cool. people who've been in some pretty cool movies. All right, Drew, where are we? Two. Yeah. Colin. 
Hey. Hey, you're 16. Yeah, um, my question is, well, my ex-girlfriend, she had this, like, twisted nipple type thing. Mm-hmm. That was the name of a band I was in twisted. in the, uh, the 11th grade, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's like if somebody, like, pinched it and, like, like twisted it a bit. You and mean, I'm just wondering, like... You mean inverted? Um, not really. Just actually has a bit of a corkscrew well, to it? Sort of. Like, half corkscrew, sort of. I was just wondering, like, how those things, like... There's just no way anyone can ever agree with me. Or give us an answer. Her nipple is twisted. What does that mean? That's it? That is a corkscrew-type pattern, is it not? Yeah. So it's like like, like an ice cream cone swirling? Soft, a swirl, soft swirl? Soft swirl? Mm, not really, but... It, Colin, tell us what you got bent. before we can comment about it. I'm done. It's oh, I'm done. Oh, who cares? Well, well, what's it do? What's it look like? Let's say you put your hand on it. Yeah. But then, and you could hold it in whatever shape you wanted, it, the shape that it was in, but then we'd make your hand invisible. What would that look like? Like, let's say you took a normal nipple yeah. that was protruding, and we put your invisible hand on it. What would you do with your invisible hand to make it look like hers? I'd pinch it and then twist it a bit. How far would you twist it? How, how much of a turn? Like, what? Two inch turn. Two inches. Yeah. That's, All right. Let's not work with the. Let's not work wow. with the units. Let's use a of, clock of measurements. Let's, let's use. use a clock. Is it protruding? That's going to be real confusing. Is it protruding more would, than normal? Would you hold on? Would you turn your hand a quarter turn, a half turn, three quarter turn, or a full turn? About a quarter. Quarter turn. So it's a little two, twisted. Two inches. Two inches. I don't know. What, <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Hey. Uh, you're so, not going to college, are you, Colin? Mm, I don't know. Probably not. Okay, good. All right. So what are you going to do pinch? about it? He just doesn't like to look Why at it. Why is the pinch important? <laughs> Where's the pinch come in? It's just, it kind of sticks out. Okay. Oh, so it sticks out, but a, but a nipple might stick out anyway, right? Normally it does. It's different than the other one. It sticks uh. further. It sticks it, out a little further. Maybe it was pierced and she's too afraid to tell mm. you. Oh, it's a little bit. Interesting. I had it pierced. Okay. Well, well, it's very common for there to be normal asymmetry, that things are not exactly matching. There can be a change in directionality, change symmetry. in symmetry. That means oh, the one isn't like the other. Yeah. It's common. So it's all right. All it's, right. There's Do not you, a reason why. It's just that's the way she's she o- is. She's okay. All right. That's good for you. It's uh, the spi- like spice of life. She doesn't have cancer or anything, though. No. No. All right, Colin? All right, take care of yourself. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's keep uh, let's keep pushing forward here, Drew. Let's not get uh, bogged down. Jennifer, what? You're 17. Yeah. Um. See, I have all these stretch marks on my upper thighs, and mm-hmm. I was just wondering what would cause it. All right. Sudden growth, growing quickly. How do you get rid of those? Really, Most women have it. Yeah, yeah. Very common. You really can't. Um. Uh, listen, by the way. I, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Don't mind a stretch mark. Not at all. I, I, I don't you, mind one. You can actually go to a dermatologist and they have laser treatment. That laser can. sort of changes the color. It does not get rid of the stretch mark. Once the elastin breaks down, right, right. that's it. It's broken down. And uh, other than cutting them out, which they can do, you can cut right. them out. Oh, okay. There really is actually no way. Women to get a little uh, a little nutty with this, and uh, but I, I, most don't women mind have it. them. And if you know when you first have them, are they kind of new or what? How long have you had them? I put her on hold. Well, she's 17. Mm, yeah, no, they'll get a lot less. A they get lot, a lot less. less noticeable. So when I was 17, we had them, and you know, now I don't even notice them. It was we, you and your breasts? My sister. Oh, yeah. okay. I have a young, like a year younger sister. We She grew up faster. What the hell that. happened to this uh, call? I don't know. We're going to break them. No, we're not. Charles? Yeah, how you're, we doing? You're 30. Yeah. Uh, hey, I was kind of wondering what they got out there for, uh, like you know, you know, female female birth control, but male birth control. I was wondering what's out there for that. And nothing yet. Nothing yet. They keep talking about it, right? Yeah. It's just you can't really do the same hormonal manipulations that you do with women. You can't give enough suppressive hormones to stop sperm production. Right. Not without causing horrible problems. I remember yeah. hearing something a couple of years ago about this, and they're always uh, testing it out well, in Europe. There are all, all kinds that. of interesting ways to try to change the kind of sperm that's produced and the quality and the, uh, how it's released and this kind of stuff, but nothing yet. And as long as, I, I mean, in a way, 
I think the person who can get pregnant is going to be the one who's going to want to use the birth control because it's their ass that's more on the line. I mean, I think guys will use it and will want to use it, but ultimately... We don't trust the guys. I wouldn't trust them. Right. They're lazy, they're horny, they'll lie, they're stupid. Uh, It's you, it's your uterus, it's your belly, and if you don't want to get pregnant... You really got to almost look after that. I, I yeah, don't want to sound agree. like a caveman. One hundred percent. That's unfortunate. But I'm. Uh, um, I, I agree with myself wholeheartedly. I don't think it should be like that. It shouldn't be like that, though. <laughs> it shouldn't. But think, think about guys. I understand, but that's our problem. Okay. All right. We'll be back. I feel so liquidy. Really? I, Why? You're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew. Love Line. I'll be right back. That keeps you up at night. It's Love Line only on WEBN. All right, that's it, Marissa. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Grown ups, everybody. <laughs> UPN, nine o'clock. Monday nice. nights. Good night. And uh, that girl. That <laughs> some girl, girl. Some girl. Yeah, starring Marlo Thomas. Oh, good. Uh, no, uh, some girl will be out in the uh, Blockbuster uh, starting tomorrow or, or in the next few weeks. <laughs> you know, like Throw that. your keys down. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're such right. a rack. No, you yeah, did I'm it on the rug stop. this time, uh, right? All right? You're right. I'm busted. All right, so until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! This has been Love Line. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And probably not the views of Western One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer.